Hi everyone, it's Dr. Karen, the Women's Midlife Specialist, and today is a great set of labs that I'm going to share, go all the way through to our very difficult system, the adrenal access dysfunction. And so I'm actually going to share with you a lot about the adrenal access in this video. And so if you have any adrenal access dysfunction, this is the one you definitely want to listen to. I haven't had a chance to really talk more about adrenal access dysfunction, but this was but the perfect opportunity. So we're going to go for it today. So this is ST. She's lovely 49 years old. She's postmenopausal, and she's not on any current bioidentical hormone replacement. So she did a, um, a blood spot test, not saliva, but blood spot, which is also very good. And it's, it's um, great for people who don't have a lot of saliva or have a difficult time getting saliva. I still prefer saliva, but this is still very good. So I'm happy, so happy that she joined us. So she's got a normal, oh, oh, first before I, I go further, I want to remind you that we're working with postmenopausal reference ranges that are not reference ranges associated with bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. So there's a reference range if you're not using bioidentical hormones and there's a reference range if you are using them. So we're looking at reference ranges that are the lowest that are going to be recommended for anyone. Okay, so we've got a 37 estradiol, she's 49, 37 estradiol, and that's in the postmenopausal reference range, and it's normal, but we've got a progesterone that is so low that actually it's just too low to measure. It's less than 0.1, so there's no way they can determine a progesterone to estrogen ratio because the progesterone is essentially zero. It's less than 0.1 it doesn't even register on their test. So you can't divide anything into zero. So it, they give an NA, non-applicable. But it does mean that she's very estrogen dominant because she's got a normal amount of estradiol and pretty much no progesterone. So remember, estrogen dominance is not about necessarily a high estrogen. It could be, but it's but estrogen dominance normally when we're talking about estrogen dominance, we're talking about how the ratio between progesterone and estrogen is off and the progesterone is too low causing the estrogen balance to be too high, meaning estrogen dominance. So she is in a quite estrogen dominant state. Her testosterone is also very actually low, even though 10 to 45, you're going to see it on a graph in just a moment. So this is low for a 49-year-old. And DHEA uh, is too, too low. It's half the lowest of even the postmenopausal range. So 23 is just very, very low. And that actually worries me as to how much stress is going on uh, with uh, the, our sweet ST. Because this low of DHEA is indicative, and that's why I'm going to focus on adrenal axis dysfunction for you today. So you get a, a, a real good bird's eye view of what adrenal axis dysfunction looks like in terms of labs. Our cortisol here for ST is 18.7, which is at the highest end of normal uh, in the morning. It's very time sensitive. So we're gonna look at that in a graph right here. So here's our estradiol, lowest end of normal for postmenopausal women. But if you compare her to a 50 year old woman, look at this. Postmenopausally, she's at the lowest end of normal for her age. And progesterone, very low, much lower. She's at basically zero, as you can see. And testosterone, low end of normal for her age at 49. And then here we've got our DHEA, very low, off the graph for a 50-year-old at that at, at uh, this age here. And then cortisol, 
having it done right before she did it right before 6 a.m. She is um, uh, not at the peak, but she is just a little bit above um, uh, average, which is good. Now, so we've got a terribly low DHEA here, but the good thing is she can elicit this morning cortisol response. Now, what that means is after you've been through extensive length of stress for a long period of time, the adrenal glands can no longer even elicit a cortisol response. This is called the cortisol awakening response or the CAR car. So she's still able to do that. And you're going to see a lot more of what that means shortly here. So this is, this is a good thing. This is a, a good thing. All right, so let's take a look at some symptoms here and see if we can get a better idea of what ST needs, right? Okay, so here we go. We've got quite a few symptoms that are ranked in the severe category. All of these here that are out all the way to the severe is... Um, what ST is feeling. And then she's got quite a few more that are moderate. And um, in fact, most of her symptoms are either moderate or severe. So she's really suffering here. And if we look at some of these vaginal dryness, depression, sleep is disturbed. She's both fatigued in the morning and evening. Stress is severe. Uh, weight gain actually is in the hips and the waist, decreased libido, which would be expected. She also has uh, scalp uh, loss of hair on her scalp, um, which is, you know, either stress or metabolism, irritable, anxious, uh, decreased stamina, rapid aging, swelly, puffy face. That's classic for metabolism, hair class, dry hair and breaking nails, classic for metabolism, thinning skin. So here, if we look at where all these severe and moderate and mild, where all these symptoms uh, correlate into groups, this is what ZRT does for us, which I absolutely love. And check it out right here, the number one a uh, combination of symptoms point to low androgens, which of course we know she has extremely low DHEA and a low testosterone, and this is uh, showing significantly as the highest problem, but not far behind. We've got high cortisol, not a big surprise. Um, she's been under a lot of stress, I think, for quite some time. And then next, uh, hypometabolism, so low thyroid. So a lot of these symptoms that um, I was referring to here, the swelly, puffy eyes, dry, brittle hair, nails breaking, uh, and many, many other symptoms that are a common nation of uh, low thyroid and other problems, sleep disturbed, depressed, uh, fatigue, scalp uh, hair loss, all of these are related to thyroid as well. And then the fourth one that is still quite high, more than 50 here, this number is significant, um, is her estrogen and progesterone deficiency. But we see this; these are our four big bad boys. Um, they're, they're all kind of, you know, in the red, um, but these are certainly the ones that are standing out and jumping at us and biting us. Okay, so here they are, the low androgens. These are the top groupings, low androgens. We've got the severely low DHEA and low testosterone, even for postmenopausal reference ranges. And we've got that high cortisol. She's got a high normal morning cortisol, but we don't know what it does later in the day. It may actually rise later in the day. It may actually drop low later in the day. She has so many difficult symptoms. It's highly suggestive of adrenal axis dysfunction. It's, it's like uh, uh, as sure as the nose on our face. And then she's got low metabolism. Uh, it appears her thyroid may be poorly functioning, and that may be because of the cortisol and sex hormone issue. It may be an individual problem in and of itself. And then, of course, we do know that she is estrogen dominant. She has no hot flashes 
or night sweats. And even with this, est- she's very estrogen dominant. And she, in terms of her estrogen level for her age, she's at the low end of normal, which is also significant for a woman um, because we really feel better up here. So this, if we want to optimize, we want to work with both of these at the at the same time as getting out of estrogen dominance. So she has no hot flashes or night sweats, thank goodness, but she does have a lot of mood changes, depressed, anxious, irritable, and this can be a part of many hormonal imbalances. So what are we going to do for ST? I know you're you're biting at the bit here, ST, saying, please help me because I know there's a lot going on. So we got to fix the easiest thing first. <laughs> the easiest thing, I'm telling you, as you've seen in many, many of these videos that we've done. Boy, we've done, we've done dozens of these videos now. And um, the easiest thing to fix is, of course, the sex hormones. So it's as easy as applying a cream. And for this low of progesterone, you actually fall in the category of needing two products. So we need to pump up this uh, estradiol, estriol, and progesterone with Hormone Heaven, two pumps twice a day, and then we need to add some more progesterone to balance this out better. So if this was more, more typical, you're young, 49, and eventually you won't need this extra hormone protect. Eventually your two levels will start getting closer together, your estradiol and your progesterone, as you start stop producing even more estradiol for on your own as you get a little older and this um, hormone protect can come off but right now you need it to get yourself out of progesterone uh, and estrogen um, ratio imbalance we need that ratio between 100 and 500 not a in a so the next time you test you will be there and um, uh, that's with two pumps twice daily of hormone heaven one pump twice daily of Hormone Protect. That's the easy stuff. Now, you do have um, severe vaginal dryness, so I want to throw that in here. Uh, Take care of the old VJJ, and I recommend one suppository every other day to start. And uh, if it's really, really dry, you may need to go with that for a little longer, uh, or you can uh, try after the first month three times a week. You'll get an idea of what's best for you. Okay. Now, how about DHEA and the adrenal, uh, uh, excuse me, DHEA and the androgens? That's where we need to go next. Now, with mood symptoms and such, what we know, I'm positive, we've got a significant adrenal axis dysfunction. DHEA can be tricky. So you never, ever want to use a sublingual DHEA. Drops are a sublingual, so you don't want a liquid drop. Um, You either need an oral or a topical. Unfortunately, there's no topical out there with a low enough dose until the women's midlife specialist is going to take care of that. So we are designing a topical DHEA that is a proper dosing. And it's coming out soon. Shh, don't tell anybody. This is really uh, one of our big surprises uh, for the, for coming up very, very soon. So, but we, but what I, you still need that oral DHEA. You need up to 10 milligrams oral DHEA. But with you, my darling, I do not see that an oral DHEA is going to complete the picture for you, but it's where you have to start. So, whether or not you're ready for it now is of question and you can give it a try right now or you can wait one month after using Hormone Heaven and Hormone Protect get which will get your uh, adrenal axis already on the road to recovery by balancing those hormones and it will get your sleep better controlled. Your adrenal glands will already be improving with the changes that you make right now. And then you can start on this DHEA. And the and what might happen, what actually might happen is that DHEA, when you are not ready for it, it will actually increase your anxiety because it is an energy forming 
hormone. It's energy forming, which we love, right? It's important for the immune system. It's important for your energy. You know, guys have a lot of testosterone. They have a very high DHEA and a very high testosterone level. And they have more energy than us. And if you think about it, I mean, they really do have more energy than us. And, you know, we joke about that's because we use more brain power, right? <laughs> and we do. We see the 40,000 level uh, picture of everything, whereas men see the, you know, horizon or the, the flat level. We see everything. So that does take a lot of energy and, and our brain power takes a lot of energy. But they have more energy producing energy androgens. So if your body isn't ready for that and you're still that hamster on that hamster wheel without that hamster wheel slowing down and you can't get a break to get off, that DHEA might be too much for you right now. So my recommendation is actually to get your sex hormones just a little bit better um, uh, uh, balanced and supported supporting your adrenal glands and a lot of your symptoms uh, will improve but uh, they will not go away with just fixing the sex hormones because so much else is going on so my recommendation is in one month from now, get started on DHEA at five milligrams and then after a month increase that to 10 milligrams and I think you'll be ready at that point so let's move on to thyroid. Well, before, actually, I'm so sorry, before we move on, at that point, this DHEA is going to improve your testosterone, okay? So you're going to start low and go slow. You're going to do that five milligrams and you're going to go up to 10 milligrams. You're going to be the perfect candidate for a topical DHEA. But first, we're going to do this and that will improve your testosterone as well. But we've got to get that DHEA up and with that, the testosterone will naturally come up because 50% of DHEA converts to testosterone. Okay, so that now I'm finished with DHEA, and so we'll go on to thyroid. Okay, so you've got a lot of symptoms that are indicative of low thyroid. And if we look at those again, uh, the low thyroid, it's, it's very suspicious, very suspicious. And um, there are certain low thyroid symptoms that are classic. This one here that you have ranked as a severe swelly, swelling or puffy eyes and face, dry and brittle hair. Now, they don't put it as an estrogen deficiency over here, um, but I do see dry hair uh, with um, estrogen deficiency as well. Uh, but nails breaking and brittle, this also I see commonly when people don't moisturize their nails. But um, other than that, this is metabolism. But this one, swelling and puffy eyes and face, that, my darling, is classic from low metabolism. I don't see it in anything else. I don't. Every now and then, I'll see it with somebody with an abnormal progesterone or somebody with, um, but, but it's usually the progesterone that's causing the thyroid dysfunction, but this is classic for thyroid. So there's a lot of others. The way you, you can determine where you are with uh, what falls in low thyroid is you look, you, you take this hypometabolism, you run your, your little finger up here and you look at these symptoms. So they've put a circle in where um, thyroid is affected. So if you ranked it as a moderate or severe, then you've got a colored circle here. So constipation, you've got a moderate that is classic for low thyroid. It can also be poor diet, but um, I don't see a huge issue here, uh, you're actually a, a small lady, um, BMI of only 22, I believe, but uh, poor diet, not enough fiber, not enough water, those are important, but metabolism, classic. Nails and hair, uh, decreased sweating, see, look at that, classic and only classic metabolism. Swelling and puffy face, uh, decreased stamina, that falls in three categories. So you can see all of these different things here, loss of scalp hair, it falls directly under uh, thyroid and high cortisol, okay? 
thyroid and high cortisol. Your two big ones. These are big for you. And adrenal, uh, libido, um, fatigue. They fall under different categories. Sleep fall under multiple categories. Depressed falls under multiple categories. Classic for metabolism, but also sex hormones and adrenal hormones. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how to determine which which of these symptoms actually fall under each category if you want to really delve into it like I like to. Okay, so that's why I recommend that you do this. Um, I recommend that you check your thyroid and not just check it on conventional standards. I want you to really look at this as a functional medicine because conventional is just way off the mark way, way, way off the mark, just like they are with sex hormones, just like they are with stress hormones. They're also off the mark with thyroid hormones. And 50% of women after menopause become hypothyroid. Not all of them end up needing a thyroid medication. So let much less than that actually end up needing a thyroid medication. Uh, about half, about 25% can end up correcting their thyroid dysfunction with naturally. Uh, by correcting the sex hormones, correcting the adrenal hormones, and um, nutrients, okay? So the what you need to test is in your blood work. It can be venous blood work, or it can be uh, ZRT blood spot. So uh, TSH, free T4, free T3, reverse T3, and TPO. TPO is a, an antibody against thyroid. Uh, hormone. And that can be tested in venous blood work. Now, you have enough symptoms for your doctor to be able to get um, uh, this paid for through your insurance. Uh, uh, you have many symptoms indicative of, of low thyroid. So if you have uh, covered your uh, deductible and you are covered with your um, uh, insurance here for thyroid, uh, that would be the best way to go and get it paid for by insurance. So you pay your insurance every month. So get that through there. If you don't, if it's not covered, I would highly recommend you go through ZRT blood spot. They don't have a reverse T3, which is important, um, to me, but, uh, uh, ZRT does have excellent reference ranges and they also have the blood spot is very reliable. I use a ZRT blood spot on a lot of people for um, thyroid and uh, it works out very well for me. So if you, uh, this is my first choice, this is my second choice. And um, after you do that, I want you to look for functional medicine results. So instead of the reference range they give you, look for this. Your free T4 and your free T3 need to be in the mid to higher range of normal reference range. Mid to higher range. If it's mid to lower reference range, that's too low. Your you need to if you if you do it through blood work, you need to look for a reverse T3 the lower the better. So you want to look for no higher than the mid range. I got somebody the other day who was at the lowest end of normal. I was so excited. I've never had that. Um, I've, I've never seen that. I usually see it somewhere in the mid range. But she was the lowest end of normal. That was super exciting. If you're watching this and listening to this, you know who you are. I was so proud of you. Uh, so nutrients and, and what you eat has a lot to do with this reverse T3, but also genetics. Okay, so this reverse T3 is important to look at if um, there's nothing else that makes sense. So because reverse T3 is completely inactive. Now I'm going to teach you so much this year about your thyroid. It's going to be crazy. You're going to be, your head is going to be swimming and you're going to be like, wow, I can't believe how much the women's with eye specialist has expanded out from sex hormones. This is going to be a rocking year. My, our year is June to June. So June, 2008 to July, to June, 2019, 2018 to 2019. Sorry about that. So June to June is our year. In just a week or so from now, we are going to be celebrating our one year anniversary. And we've really focused on sex hormones, but now I'm going to be able to give you so much more. Okay, so the TSH, we want that to be sitting between 0.5 and 1.3. So 
it is plus or minus 0.3, but you're going to see the reference range like 0.4 to 4.4. That's crazy. Let me tell you, if your TSH is above 1.5, uh, you can push it to 2 if your free T4 and free T3 are good. But let me tell you, if you're pushing over 2 uh, or even 1.5, you're going down. Your thyroid is not so hot. And we want a hot to trot thyroid. Okay, so that's what I'm going to throw your way. This is your, this is your job to get your thyroid tested. And uh, I'm going to have a lot going on here to help you with this. Um, so keep on watching and keep on hanging out with us so you can uh, figure out what to do with your thyroid after you get these labs. Okay, so now we're heading in, oh, wow, to the big, big thing that's going on with ST and also what's going on with a lot of midlife women uh, because of just the fact that we are women and put so much on our plate and by the time we're hitting uh, our midlife years we're just ready to start uh, moving away from uh, any more damage we're ready to start taking care of ourselves which is good which is it's great because also as a geriatrician you know I have a full-time practice as a geriatrician as well and let me tell you our little men uh, we take care of so many elderly people and our little men they do great when they're married they do they don't do so great when they're not married and that's because we take care of them and um, they love it and our little ladies um, sometimes suffer from it, but um, many of them wouldn't have it any other way. And I know I wouldn't have it any other way. I want to cook for my husband, and I want to, I want to keep him healthy, and it satisfies me. And a lot of people aren't cooks. You know, the man is the cook in the family, and that's beautiful. But that just didn't happen with me. <laughs> I ended up being the cook. So, um, but he does so many other things. But that, but the things that I I want to do, um, I hope will keep him healthier. Okay, so we want to stay powerful, we want to stay strong, but we also want to take care of ourselves. So this is the time that we have to focus on ourselves, And this is the axis that gets screwed up, is our adrenal axis. And we um, end up with an adrenal axis dysfunction. So these are very typical high cortisol symptoms. ST, you can relate to a lot of these. Disturbed sleep, depression, you feel like you have rapid aging. Obviously, you have hair loss and skin conditions, irritable, brain fog, high anxiety, mood swings. Um, you didn't have these things. You did have some um, increased weight. Um, so there's quite a few in here that you can relate to. And this is uh, very typical for us in our midlife years. So this next graph is what I want to focus on, and it's extremely important. And, and what it is, I tried to find who actually created this original graph. I did not create this graph, but I don't have a reference on it because everybody now uses it. It's a classic graph in functional medicine, and I don't know who actually designed this graph. There's something called a cortisol to DHEA ratio, and generally a healthy cortisol to DHEA ratio is about 5 to 1 or 6 to 1, meaning that cortisol should be about 5 parts to every DHEA one part. So what happens is in adrenal axis dysfunction, what many people call adrenal fatigue, is that there are actually four stages. There's stage one, stage two, stage three, and then exhaustion, which is called failure or adrenal failure, which is actually Addison's disease. This is a this is where uh, conventional medicine um, recognizes adrenal fatigue. So conventional medicine doesn't generally recognize stage three, two, or one, which is, you know, crazy. Like you go from normal to here without anything in between. That's just kind of, to me, stupid. So this is really what happens. We've got a normal state here when our cortisol is, uh, this is the cortisol line or the cortisol level. 
this level here is pregnanolone level and this also can help explain if you follow me closely why I don't like using pregnanolone for quite some time. I like proof that we need pregnanolone before we use that because it can really screw up hormones if you use it too soon. And then this is our line for DHEA. And I hope this really brings home to you some very significant points today on adrenal axis dysfunction. So what happens when we're normal? We've got these nice little levels, but as we go into a stressed state, stage one, the first thing that happens in an acute stress state is we've got a spiking of cortisol. Okay, now that's normal. If this spiking of cortisol continues because we have ongoing stress, we've got rising and rising and rising and rising cortisol, but then we get to the point where this extended stage one, you see how long it is, it's a long stage, this extended stage one, the cortisol starts to drop. After it drops, it reaches back into the normal. See, this; these are the levels of cortisol, low, normal, high. So after it reaches, it's gone for some time in stage one, it reaches stage two, and you are measuring your cortisol level and finding it to be normal. It is not normal. It has already gone through this spike. Now it's on its way down and you don't even know it because it's registering normal. Now, what happens to pregnanolone during that time? It stays normal the whole time. Okay, so you go through this incredibly stressful time for an extended period of time. Pregnanolone does nothing. DHEA, look what happens to DHEA it declines. So this cortisol to DHEA ratio becomes extremely large. It's no longer five to one or six to one as it is over here when things are normal. It's very high. So we've got this lo lowering DHEA in stage one continues to lower in stage two. You see how short this stage two is compared to stage one. The stress continues. The adrenal axis is not being taken care of, it is not recovering, and you move on into stage three where the cortisol starts to drop. Now it's in the low range, okay? So now we've got a low cortisol, we've got a low DHEA. This cortisol to DHEA ratio gets closer, but only because you're now moving in to a sad state of adrenal fatigue, and this is a bad stage. This is a medical illness called Addison's disease, and you no longer produce adequate cortisol, and you have to take hydrocortisone to stay alive. Okay, so this, uh, guys, I have had patients in this, so many patients, elderly patients, from extensive physical illness. Uh, patients with cancer uh, after chemotherapy, they're still fighting cancer. Patients with surgeries that had multiple complications. Patients with uh, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease for many years and have difficulty breathing. Patients with congestive heart failure and kidney disease. Patients who are alcoholics. I mean, these, this is a tough, tough stage. Most of us don't reach this stage unless we really truly have medical illness like immune disease or cancer, or all those things I just mentioned. Most of us hang out in this stage three, never reach air. So because we don't have the physical nature, but we are feeling almost as bad here. And many people in this stage three still need support with hydrocortisone. And if they fix the adrenal axis dysfunction, they can move back here. These people cannot move back here. But these people, people who are, have Addison's disease cannot. But if you're in here, you can recover. It's hard, but you can recover. If you're in here, you can definitely recover. Now, I just want to show one more thing that happens with pregnanolone as you move into stage two and three. As you see, it starts to decline. It's declining a little bit at this point. It gets just a little low, but then we've, we, we really drop.
So these failure people, uh, uh, I use pregnanolone, uh, high doses, high doses of pregnanolone in these people. Okay, high doses, very high. 100, 200 milligrams. Okay. All right. I'll even use 100 milligrams in here for a woman. A woman needs more pregnanolone. But I do not use pregnanolone in stage two, even though we're a little low. If we're a little low, maybe a low dose, 10 milligrams. Okay? I, instead, I work on improving this adrenal axis dysfunction. All right. I hope that was super exciting for you. It's super exciting for me. I can't wait to teach you this in detail. So this I put together for you because I really want to give you some awareness of the top 12 supports for adrenal health because we got to do them all. Um, we've, we, you may not do them all every day, but you in, in, in you start injecting <laughs> each of these into your life. And, um, you know, awareness of the situation comes number one. And that's why I'm so proud of all of you guys, because this awareness to get your labs tested, this awareness to stay uh, um, and, and, and hang out with me, get your hormones uh, fixed. That's the easiest thing to do to get you started. That's going to help your sleep quite a bit. And we're going to talk a lot about this diet that is so important for adrenal health. We've done a little bit already. You've got to set some self-care, some time to laugh and set time for fun. Even if it's just a little bit of time here and there, later on as you start getting better, this time will get more and more. And we need some gentle stretching, heavy-duty exercise is very bad for the adrenal glands until you're ready. But gentle stretching, walking, gentle yoga is excellent. Tai Chi, excellent. Uh, these are great exercises for adrenal fatigue. Uh, you need inspiration and you really need a mentor. If you want to use me, I'm here for you. I've had a mentor for many years, um, at least a decade. And uh, I really started making my quantum leaps when I actually hired a mentor. Um, that was the first biggest gift I've ever given to myself. I paid $25,000 for her, and it was my biggest jump. Uh, but um, uh, I did that. Uh, I was with her for three years, and it was. Um, then I went to another mentor, and I've, I've uh, worked with a, a number of different people, and they've all been wonderful for me. Um, the uh, journaling, I love journaling. Um, and I think that this is a valuable part. Now, obviously, you may want to do it every day. You may not. But, <coughs> excuse me, it's a big help. Doodling, if you don't like to write, um, doodling is fun. Uh, and it's relaxing. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about gut health. Gut health is vital for detoxification and metabolism of hormones and getting rid of um, endocrine disruptors. These are all very difficult for adrenal health. Uh, so we'll, we'll really work hard on that. Grounding, I learned actually interesting. Lee, I learned um, off of uh, the internet with uh, Dr. Mercola. I had not heard of grounding, um, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago. And I went out to the beach and, and said, oh my God, no wonder I, I love this. This is grounding. I'm, I love putting my feet in the sand and my feet in the grass. That's grounding. Essential oils, these are really, to me, it's a vital part of adrenal health because there are so many beautiful uh, gifts from our our earth. Essential oils is one of them, and we need to use essential oils for energy. We need to use essential oils for calming, for immune stimulation. These are beautiful, absolutely magnificent. I've got a great surprise for you. You keep hanging out with me. You're not going to, you're, you're, you're just going to not believe what I have for you for uh, December. I've got a gift for you for December and essential oils. And then, of course, supplements. The We do not uh, we cannot get our adequate supplementation of the nutrients that we need from our diet. It's just not possible. And there's certain supplements, both herbal supplements and vitamin minerals uh, that and amino acids, so many things. And this, my friends, this one's going to be an exciting thing to cover with you next month in June when I've got a huge big, wonderful surprise for you next month uh, in this category as well, because this is foundational. This is foundational, and we're still in the foundation part of healing. Okay, so these are our top 12 supports for adrenal health. You put that together with this understanding, and you've got a good uh, assistance in what uh, to do 
do for your adrenal glands. Now, for UST, some people need adrenal supplement and some people don't. If you have true adrenal dysfunction, you almost always do. It's been extraordinarily hard for me to find a good adrenal product. And uh, some years ago, when I had the ABCs for Women program, it was called ABCs for Women, and I had my own product. It was called Cortisol Calming. And this product, I want to tell you, it literally just flew off our shelves. We could, every time we ordered uh, a, a, another supply, we, um, uh, we were ordering more. Uh, people came in, they bought it for their friends or family. And so I am going, I'm, I'm not going to bring back this particular one, but I'm going to bring back one very, very similar because I, I know even more than I knew then um, with that uh, look at me. I was a young little girl. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> I'm going, but that's my, another surprise for you. I can't find the perfect three. Everybody seems to have two and be just a little off, but I can't find the perfect three. There's, there's a, a need. There's three different times, uh, that adrenal products are needed and they need three different pr products. So what, what they, are, they need one product depending on which one they are. So do, I, I like these two that I'm going to send you to look at um, uh, to use while I'm coming back with mine because uh, mine are not going to come back until July or August. I don't want you to wait that long. So I've looked very carefully into the best one for you particularly, ST, and with anxiety and some mood changes um, and you could potentially actually be this middle person and it's not out there on the market the one that is needed that has adrenal cortex but does not have a, a adrenal medulla or a whole adrenal glandular. The whole adrenal glandular has all parts of the adrenal gland. And I'm going to teach you all of this uh, in, in the near future, but it's not going to be, uh, but, you, but when you have anxiety, you should not take whole adrenal glandulars. It's not a good idea. And orthomolecular only has whole adrenal glandulars. Uh, Designs for Health only has whole uh, adrenal glandulars. It's, it's, it's almost every, all they put is whole adrenal glandulars in there. And I don't understand why they don't realize. Probably because the people who are making them aren't the people on the front line treating women and see what happens. You give a whole adrenal glandular to a woman, you have a very high risk of increasing their anxiety. So what we're going to do is we're going to relax and calm your adrenal glands right now. So we're going to just nourish them with adaptogens. So these are vital nutrients for your adrenal glands and they're not excessively high doses because you really need a foundational nutrient as well. But this here is going to also balance with, a, with um, uh, adaptogens and uh, the amino acid tyrosine your adrenal glands. Is this going to help a lot? So the adrena tone is the one that you need if you have some stress uh, moods, you know, like anxiety, irritability, depression. Okay. If you have depression without anxiety or ir irritability, then you can move on to the adrenal complex. But with any mood disorder, we need adrena tone. Okay. So this is actually one capsule three times a day with a meal. Or you could take two capsules uh, with one meal and one capsule with another meal. Okay, so just as a review, let's see where we've where we are. Just as a review, um, we've got the hormone heaven two pumps twice a day, hormone protect one pump twice a day. This for your happy hoo hoo, a DHEA, but not until a week from uh, excuse me a month from now. That's what I would recommend. We want to also think about our 12 top supports for adrenal health and adrenatone, um, which is our adaptogens to help heal our adrenal glands. Okay, so as far as designs for health, this week we're going to have our, our website up to give you the lowest prices of design for health products on the 
internet. If you find a lower price, I want to know. Okay, so I hope this helped you, ST. I think it also helped many other people understand the adrenal axis and what happens with adrenal fatigue and um, also what happens with this uh, uh, cortisol to DHEA ratio and the stages of adrenal fatigue. All right, I am so happy to be here and so happy to help you, ST. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and share it with your friends. I'd super appreciate it. Okay, take care. Have a great day. Bye bye.